This video is brought to you by the Farmer Klein YouTube channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Hello everybody, welcome back to the Farming Simulator 22 Map First Impressions video. Today we're going to take a look at the Isolated Valley. But before that, this video is brought to you by Tank Fooder and Dozer. Thank you for being farm barons. So the Isolated Valley map can be found at the FarmingSimulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And this is a wilderness style map. This map is also available for all platforms. Let me read you the description. Welcome to a small remote region isolated from civilization. Are you capable of taking over the farm located here? This map includes two starting fields, collectible objects, a small starting farm, two forest areas, trees scattered everywhere, everywhere and a train to transport your goods. This map does have a single required mod in the Rustic Cavern by Elk Mountain Modding. Let's go ahead and load into the map and see what it's all about. Now, in addition to the required mod, we are also going to be using the mods we typically use when we look at maps there, additional field info, additional game settings, animal food overview, field lease, field calculator, precision farming, and straw harvest. But we'll tell you if you load this map up in farm manager mode or start from scratch, you'll find that the farmland is built out exactly how you see it here in new farmer mode. The only exception is you do not have any land, but the starting buildings and the machinery are present in all game modes. In addition, if you happen to have a lower end system, you will have zero issues whatsoever in maintaining a nice solid 60 frames per second on this map because, well, you're, this is what you see. These are the only buildings on the map. These two structures right here. You got a few deco elements. Other than that, we're talking about grass, we're talking about trees, we're talking about dirt. There's a little bit of water also, but that's basically what we've got going on here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the PDA. We have two forest areas, one right there, one right here. We do have a train that runs along the western edge of the map and exits down here at the south. Then it's going to come back up from the south and make its way diagonally to the east side over here. We do have all our standard crops available to us in FS22 on this map. In addition, if you happen to have the premium expansion enabled, you will have your red beets, carrots, and parsnips. As you can see, this map includes two starting fields. They are on farmland ID30. That is our starting farmland, and that can be bought in any alternate game mode for $112,796. Overall, we have our farmlands laid out in a grid fashion for the most part. We do have a few odd-shaped farmlands here and there. We can also buy sections of the river if we wish to just flatten this whole area and completely get rid of the river, should we so wish. Now, a lot of the cell points are going to be down to the south over here. And that's pretty much all we got going on. We've got some cell points to the south. We do have a train that runs again, and we do have a couple of train cell points at the border here and here. And that's pretty much what we've got. Let's take a look at our farmland lease screen, just so you can see a general idea of what the various farmlands are going to cost us. Fairly economical farmland prices and you can take a look at our two starting fields 0.18 and 0.21 hectares respectively as far as our precision farming soil map there's no really need to expose this but we are using the generic soil map that does come with the precision farming mod we take a look at our crop counter we do have the standard base game crop counter also available to us here on this map and if we look down through our prices screen, you're going to see that Goldcrest Valley, which is the train cell point, is going to be the predominant cell point for most of our crops. The other cell point is Co-op Agricole, and that is going to be also down there where we had the collection of cell points. We do not have the ability to buy bulk lime on this map. That is something that is important to note. But we do have the ability to buy all our standard crops, our eggs, wool, and milk, and our standard base game production items. With respect to stones, we can sell our stones. We do not have the ability to sell any of the platinum expansion production items, but as you did see, we do have the ability to sell our farm production pack. We do have the ability to sell our premium expansion production items. And we also have the ability to sell our separated manure as well as our hay and straw pellets. We start out with a very modest list of starting machinery. 
none of it has really any maintenance going on here. So overall, everything is in disrepair, which is going to make the resale value very, very low. And other than the Bure, everything has low starting hours. Well, the Bure, top liner, and the fence. So all of our machines with engines, I guess I should say, have high hours on them. And then all of our implements are no hours at all. We do not have any animals. We also do not have any contracts on this map because, of course, there are no fields that are not owned. We have one production in a small greenhouse that is here at the starting farm. And there are 20 Holt Featherune game cartridge collectibles scattered around the map. Let's go ahead and take a look at that starting fleet. We start out with the Fent Favorite 511C and the Bure 6105 small tractor. We have the top liner 4090H harvester that is paired up with the 4090H grain header. Then we have the Karat 140TD trailer. We have the Servo 25 plow as well as the EG Rabe 3 slash 9 cultivator. The North Seed HK 25 NS 3030 cedar and power hero combination. Then we have the ABI attachments 550 water tanker. So back in here, as far as mods and DLCs, this map does not have any custom vehicles or implements. And then as far as our farm tour goes, well, we have a farmhouse. Pretty nice little farmhouse here. We're going to come in. First door on the right is going to be our bedroom with our sleep trigger. The second door on the right, well, that's going to be our restroom. That is where we're going to have our wardrobe trigger. And then other than that, we've got a nice little kitchen area to have a loft. So I guess if we have visitors coming over here to help us farm, they can stay up there. And then all our machinery is going to be either inside the shed here or inside this old barn or outside of it. With respect to the farm being customizable, yes, we can. We can customize the entirety of the farm, meaning that we can sell all three of the buildings that are here, as well as the deco elements. So here we have our small greenhouse. We have our water point. We have an interactive icon. And then our pallet spawn point as well. Let's get a little altitude and see what this map looks like from above. Overall, we can see we have some subtle rolling hills here and there. We do have some terraced areas with respect to our two forests. With the ability to buy our land where we have our waterways, we can basically level that out and eliminate the water if we want. Also makes water crossings fairly easy. With respect to our scoring, with production being built in or areas set aside for such, we're gonna give the map a full point because we do have the small greenhouse. And being a wilderness map, we have the ultimate in customization where we can really make anything, anywhere, a production point. We have one of our two forests. A little road that's running up there in between. We're going to make our way over here to the northwest corner of the map. That's where we have a train sell point and rent train trigger. You see here are roads. are basically just dirt painted areas. So they're easily customizable and changeable. With respect to the map having sell points for all of our basing crops, animal outputs, and production points, we're also going to be giving the map a full point there. So here we have a rent train trigger, and then we have our Goldcrest Valley sell point off the edge of the map. We're going to make our way down the western edge of the map now to the only other area where we have any sort of triggers, and that is going to be in the southwest portion. As we mentioned, the farm is totally customizable, so we are also going to give a full point there as well. Buildings where appropriately are using the new texturing technique. Yes, the farmhouse and the barn both are using the texturing technique as well as the greenhouse. Go ahead and take a look real quick at our landscaping. You're going to see we have fairly standard FS22 ground textures. Fairly standard FS22 trees. As far as placeable trees go. As 
And then we have fairly standard plants as well. I would think, given the amount of trees on this map, you should be able to place more trees. I don't own the land, so I really can't go and test that. And we're going to go judge our last scoring metric, basically over here once we hit to our final set of triggers. So here we have our shop trigger. And I went ahead and got a Mahindra once, so that is going to be located right here. So we've got a fairly large area for our vehicles to spawn. Our dealer maintenance trigger, our cell trigger as well, it's going to be located right here. Then all of our other cell points and triggers are right down here by the railroad tracks. So directly in front of us, we have our animal dealer. We have another rent train trigger located right here. We have two cell points, one for the train and one for trailer. And these cell points are named Rain Pool East, both for the trailer and train cell point. And then we have Co-op Agricole, which is located right here. And then this is also going to be our wood and wood chip cell point with respect to the biomass heating plant. And in that case, we do have a wood cell activation trigger right there. And that is pretty much the gist on this map. We have another rent train down here, and this is then where we're going to go and sell to our whole Crest Valley. So overall, we're going to give the map another full point with respect to triggers and interactive areas being clearly marked. That's going to give this map a score of 5 out of 5. Not that hard, honestly, for a wilderness map to score fairly high on our scoring metric because, well, there's really not a whole lot to miss. So I'd love to hear your all's thoughts down in the comments below. What do you think of this particular wilderness map? What do you think of wilderness maps in general? And are you looking forward to maybe seeing what can happen with respect to wilderness maps in the future with Farming Simulator 25 and the whole buildable farmhouses concept, possibly buildable buildings coming with respect to modders and mods? Sound off down in the comments below. And until next time, happy farming.